Lesson 3.12, choose a method to add or subtract decimals. To find decimal sums and differences, we can use mental math and properties, pencil and paper, or a calculator. The commutative property of addition lets us change the order of two add-ends. We'll get the same sum. The associative property of addition lets us change the way add-ends are grouped. That's why it's referred to as the grouping property. We can use mental math to add decimals if we use the commutative and associative properties of addition. Here we need to add 1 and 25 hundredths plus 1 and 37 hundredths plus 1 and 75 hundredths. This method works well for compatible numbers. This 25 hundredths and 75 hundredths will make one whole. If we group them together and change the order and add within the parentheses first, we get three whole. Then it's very easy to add one and thirty-seven hundredths. It's equal to four and thirty-seven hundredths. Here we have the same decimal numbers. We can add these decimals by using place value and regrouping. We add the decimals just as we add whole numbers, but we must line up the decimal points. They need to be all lined up so that our columns are straight, we get 4 and 37 hundredths. So by doing this and using place value and regrouping, we would do it the same way we would do it if there were no decimal point here. 5 plus 5, that's 10 plus 7 more is 17. We put the 1 up here to regroup it and write the 7. And 2 plus 3 plus 7 plus this 1 that we regrouped is 13. We regroup the 1 and put the 3 down. Then we add up the 4 1's as a 4 whole. We have 4 and 37 hundredths. There are many different types of calculators. Some can do complex calculations, but any calculator can solve addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. So we might have a very simple calculator that does basic calculations like add, subtract, multiply, or divide, and your cell phone cal calculator will do the same thing. And if we turn our cell phone calculator sideways, it will be able to do a lot of the functions of a scientific calculator. Here's a calculator with memory. It'll save some sums. So you can add other sums or save some differences. Our scientific calculator and then there's a graphing calculator that actually will graph on a coordinate plane, on a grid. You'll use these in high school. To add or subtract decimals on a calculator, we push a key for each part of the equation. Here we have 1 and 25 hundredths plus 1 and 31 hundredths. We start by entering the 1 and 25 hundredths. We push the 1, we push a decimal point for our decimal, we push a 2, and then the 5, and then we hit plus. We add this decimal, we push 1, the decimal point, the 3, and then the 1, and then we push equal. And the sum or difference will appear on the screen. But using our brain power will strengthen our math skills. And there's other reasons to do this using brain power. Be careful when using a calculator. If we accidentally push the wrong key, we will get a wrong answer. We can estimate the sum or difference to be sure our answer is reasonable. We can also use the calculator a second time to see if we get the same answer. But sometimes mental math or paper and pencil will be faster than using a calculator. Do you think it would be faster to find the sum here using mental math or using a calculator. We could very quickly say, well, that's 4 and skip count by 5s, 5, 10, 15, 20, and it would be slow to enter 5 with a decimal point and a 1 plus 5 and a decimal point and a 1 plus 5 and a decimal and a 1 plus doing it again and then having to hit equal. It would be much quicker in this case to do mental math. So calculators are not always the right way to go. 
The commutative and associative properties cannot be used for subtraction because they change the order of the digits. The minuin and subtrahend will change places. If our minuin is 12 and 5 tenths and we're subtracting our subtrahend 5 and 5 tenths, our difference is going to be 7. If we change places, we would have 5 and 5 tenths minus 12 and 5 tenths, and that does not have the same answer. The minuin needs to be first in subtraction. So we cannot use the commutative and associative properties for subtraction. And remember, we can use trailing zeros to the right of a decimal to give it more digits. If we have 8 and 3 tenths and we need to subtract 1 and 58 hundredths, we can put a trailing zero here so that we can regroup from the next place value. We have 0 minus 8. We can't do that, so we regroup from the 3. It becomes a 2. The 0 becomes a 10, and 10 take away 8 is 2. Now we have 2 minus 5, and we can't do that. We need to regroup from the 8. Now we have 12 minus 5, which is 7, and 7 minus 1, which is 6. It's equal to 6 and 72 hundredths. If we have 12 minus 6 and 29 hundredths, we can put a decimal point and two trailing zeros here so that we can subtract. We can regroup and we get 5 and 71 hundredths. If we have 40 minus 3 and 2 tenths, we can put a decimal point and a zero next to the whole number 40. That way we can regroup. It's equal to 36 and 8 tenths. And even for addition, if we're adding 12 plus 6 and 29 hundredths, we can put a decimal point and two trailing zeros there so that we have the same amount of digits in each to the, other, to the right side of the decimal point. So trailing zeros help us when we need to regroup. We first learned about them in video 3.4, and that's linked in the description if you missed it. We can use an inverse operation to solve for an unknown amount or to check our answer. A variable is a letter of the alphabet that takes the place of an unknown amount. And here we have one. We have a variable n. And it says n minus 2 and 7 tenths is equal to 5 and 64 hundredths. This is subtraction, so the inverse operation would be addition. We take the difference, 5 and 64 hundredths, and we add the subtrahend 2 and 7 tenths. We can add it using place value. We get 8 and 34 hundredths. That means n is equal to 8 and 34 hundredths. Here we have 35 and 2 tenths plus n is equal to 38 and 9 tenths. And this is addition, so our inverse operation will be subtraction. We take the difference, 38 and 9 tenths, and we subtract this add end, that should equal n. We can stack them in use place value and see that it's equal to 3 and 7 tenths, so we know n is equal to 3 and 7 tenths. To solve this equation, we can first find the sum of the add ends that we know, then use subtraction. We have 1, 2, 3, 4 add ends, and they will equal 16 and 5 tenths. What we do is, we add 3 and 8 tenths plus 5 and 9 tenths plus 4 and 7 tenths, and we get a subtotal of 14 and 4 tenths. And we know if we can take 16 and 5 tenths and subtract 14 and 4 tenths, the difference will be n. n is equal to 2.1. If we had the add n 2.1 here, 2 and 1 tenth, then all of these add-ins would equal 16 and 5 tenths. Now, we can also subtract each add-in one at a time, but this way is not as efficient. We would start with the sum, 16 and 5 tenths. We take away the first add-in, 3 and 8 tenths. We get 12 and 7 tenths. Then we take away the next add-in, and we get 6 and 8 tenths. Then we take the next add-in away, and we get 2 and 1 tenth, and n is equal to 2 and 1 tenth. So we got the same answer, 
but we did more work. We have three equations here. We only have two equations here. And in algebra, we would use this method. It's more efficient. Mrs. Kim needs four and 53 hundredths kilograms of apples to make apple cinnamon muffins and nine and seven hundredths kilograms to make apple pies for her bakery. If she has 15 and 88 hundredths kilograms of apples, how many kilograms will be left over? So think, we can write equations to solve the problem. We need to add the kilograms of apples she will bake, then subtract that amount from 15 and 88 hundredths to find what will be left. We add the apples for the muffins to the apples she's going to use for the pies, and we get 13 and 60 hundredths. That's how much she's going to use. We have our decimal points all lined up. Now, if that's how much she's going to use, and she had started with 15 and 88 hundredths, we can subtract. And we see that she has 2 and 28 hundredths of kilograms left. We have our decimal points all lined up, and we know how many kilograms of apples she has left over. Since we're looking for kilograms, we have to make sure that we label our answer as kilograms. And don't forget, we can turn a sheet of lined paper sideways to keep our place values in their correct column. It's very helpful with decimals. This is the end of Chapter 3. We're going to be moving on to Chapter 4, all about multiplication of decimals. We have eight video lessons for Chapter 4. I hope I'll see you there. I hope you have a great day. Don't forget to hit the like button for me. Bye.